guys? Welcome to episode, what, whatever, yeah, episode 10 of OpenGL. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about isometric projection. So where we left off here, we basically were running this little uh, game. And of course, we got our guys, same thing from last time. And we're sort of locked to this, uh, whatever, this view. Now, our camera here is at all zeros, and it's looking down the z-axis, so it's looking down the negative axis. So if you want to get it, your 2D stuff into isometric projection so that it's basically turning into 3D except without the perspective correction. You can use these same settings and the only thing you want to do differently is you want to set your view matrix with a look at. Now what look at does, at least this one from GLM, is it takes your eye position, this is where your eye is, your camera is, and a target to look at and then also it wants to know the world up. And with this, it calculates a view matrix to uh, basically put us in a position and look somewhere. So this is essentially the camera location. So for example, if we apply this 100, which this is the same as 100, 100, 100, that's gonna bring us, okay, yeah, this 100 here is gonna bring us way towards the camera. This one right here is gonna bring us up. Uh, 100 units and this one right here is going to take us to the right 100 units. Let's actually go to the left 100 units here. Oops. So let's do the negative on the X and the target is where we want to look. We want to look right at the center. So we're going to look at zero, zero. However, if I see where I kind of place my objects, all of them are negative one on the Z. So they're back just a bit. Uh, if we're doing this, we can actually put them at zero or we could say maybe our target's just right at that center, zero, zero negative one. That's right kind of in the center of where we're placing all these objects. And up is just the gravity up. That's our y direction. So that's all we place there. And that is the whole function right there. So now after putting in this function and setting that view matrix, let's see what it looks like. We're essentially going into an isometric projection here. And you can see here it is. It's the same game. Everything plays the same. But now we are in this view and then this check mark is also an isometric so it looks really weird so yeah obviously for this particular game it looks really weird because it's not built to be an isometric projection and also you notice that I can go off the screen right here and that's because this is actually clipped through now most of these these are like hundreds 200 wide so there's some part of this that is actually going through the camera because this is like a tilted scene and we're up at the one of the top size. So we would actually need to pull back further and just get, keep getting further away if we want to uh, try to stay away from that because yeah, these objects are pretty large. They're uh, scaled by 100, so they're like 200 wide. We would just have to keep pulling back if we don't want to clip in through the screen. So that's a thing you got to be aware of too. So yeah, as you can see, as we pull back further, we're no longer clipping up here. Now it's easier to see if there's more going on, but this is a very simplistic view. So from this, if you start placing 3D models or boxes in here, you're going to start getting what they call the isometric look. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in one second. Now, first of all, it's pretty obvious what isometric is. And I know you guys can look it up. And if you're already interested in graphics, it's, you probably already know generally what it is. It's generally, it means you're looking like in 3D, but there's no correction to say that it's like a human eye or an animal eye it's just a or it's just a literal interpretation of the world so you get very boxy results as we can see in some let's just look at some images here uh so here we go so if we drew this exact thing we'd get this result and as you can see there's no bending it doesn't look like you can't you can't tell how far away it is or anything like that so Going in this sort of view that I've demonstrated is great for certain like strategy games or games with grids or games where you're not in general uh, trying to view the world from like a proper character 3D perspective, but instead you might need a more tactical view. So this is often something that people will use when they're designing uh, layouts for things like buildings and they need to know proper space because this preserves the space things further away do not get smaller. So layering does matter. Uh, you do need to know how far things away 
are because of the way they layer, but it's all very literal. So uh, let's take a just a quick look at some games that use this. All right, let's take a look here. Now there's a bunch, of course. Uh, some of these I've played, some of them I may not have. Now, my one of my favorite games ever is uh, XCOM. Oh, here's uh, old Sim City. Uh, of course, Sim City here will use uh, isometric, some isometric tiling there. That way, yeah, you obviously want all the buildings to remain the same and scroll around the screen. Now, maybe I could show some examples of some techniques to like uh, use mouse to drag around the screen, but we're going to need a more uh, robust example to do that. So here's some other games. There's just little isometric demos. Here's a Mario battle scene where you can see it's an isometric. So a lot of little tactic games and RPGs will often use this uh, just to kind of show the scale of something and let you do all your tactics and know how far you are away and all that stuff. A little isometric coffee shop. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. You can stick to this for, for games and stuff too, it's uh, pretty cool. Another reason I wanted to go ahead and show this isometric is because we are jumping into 3D and I think it's due time. We've kind of been messing around, showing off little things, how to do things, but I also want to get into texturing and texturing is a big topic. So yeah, I think the next thing we're gonna do next episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about texturing and then we're gonna start turning things into 3D but I just wanted to show you how to do that isometric. It's pretty straightforward. I'll upload the code. I, mean, I did move a few things around. I might move a few others, but mainly I put the setup into the side, into the 2d game, which I've renamed side scroller. And when you set this view matrix here to look at, that's all it takes. You just need to move your camera. And the way we're going to move our camera is basically with this function. Now, if you're curious about how the math works on this, look at, you can dig into it. You can go, straight into GLM's code and see exactly what they do, or you can look it up on any math site. Um, it's, it's pretty commonly well known. So I'm not going to dig into it because ultimately you don't necessarily need to know unless you're rewriting this on your own, using these functions and understanding how the eye, uh, the center, which is where you're looking at or the point to point your eye at and the up is really all you need to know and to set that as your view matrix. That's if you're doing just game development and you don't care about the intricacies of all the math and understanding every little detail, you don't really need to know. But if you are a mathematician, yeah, you want to go understand this function. So that's just my take on the whole thing. Uh, it's programming takes a lot of time. So this is the end now quick little, quick little blurb about that. Cause I was talking to a friend and I think, I've settled upon a game design idea. So a little channel announcement here. Um, I might be a little more scarce for a little while. I'm going to try to produce a demo of this game within a couple weeks to a month. So I'm probably only going to do a couple. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Maybe as I dive into code more, I'll, I'll get to make it videos more, but I think I'm going to have to spend a little less time on videos because Making these actually takes a really long time, especially when I code up a whole new section. So, uh, yeah, when I do have that game out, it's kind of like all private right now. So I don't want to start just saying stuff when I do have a proper demo out, I will definitely announce it here and maybe on my other channel too. So, all right, well, I'll see you in the next one. And we're, we're going to start talking all about textures, how to texture these things. So if you guys want to make a cool 2d game and just want to have sprites and textures on it we're kind of get into that a little bit and uh yeah i guess that's it special thanks to all the patrons i appreciate you guys this month uh you've you guys have been amazing you've helped me stay motivated a ton and keep making these and uh also join the discord if you're a coder if you have stuff to share or just want to chat with more we're uh, on there doing stuff. all right thanks out guys see you in the next one